In late November 2023, the Indian Defence Procurement Board, a key body of the Defence Ministry, approved in principle a new aircraft carrier project, which would provide India with a third aircraft carrier. Projects approved by the Procurement Board are then forwarded to the Defence Acquisition Council for consideration. The Council is the highest decision-making body in the Ministry of Defence and finalises the capital acquisitions for the Army, Navy and Air Force. Headed by the Minister of Defence, it meets shortly after the Procurement Board and gives final approval in terms of acceptance of necessities for capital acquisition proposals. The Acquisition Council that met shortly after the November Defence Procurement Board meeting approved a number of acquisition proposals, but did not consider the new aircraft carrier project. All that the Indian Navy had sought from the Council was to agree with the Naval Assessment that there is a need for a third aircraft carrier. So where does this leave the project? Well, just because the November Council meeting did not quickly confirm the project, it doesn't mean a future meeting won't. What might this delay mean for India's carrier fleet? Might there be another option be beyond another of the Vikrant class? Salutations. Today's briefing, India, a three carrier fleet. When will it be achieved? What might it consist of? This briefing will look at possible options and timelines for India to achieve a three aircraft carrier fleet. The Indian Navy's current longest serving carrier is the INS Vikramaditya a modified Kiev class carrier purchased from Russia. It is a Stobar, or short takeoff but arrested recovery carrier, similar in size to the French Charles de Gaulle, although the Charles de Gaulle is a nuclear powered Catabar carrier. Commissioned for the second time in November 2013, it displaces around 45,000 tonnes and carries around 36 aircraft. India has successfully kept older ships in service for many years, with the INS Virat being a good example so we may see the Vikramaditya still in service in the early 2040s. Joining the Vikramaditya is India's newest carrier, INS Vikrant, which was commissioned in September 2022. India's first indigenously constructed carrier, again in a Stobar configuration, it also displaces around 45,000 tonnes and carries around 36 aircraft. What might India's third aircraft carrier look like? possibly to be named INS Vishal. Will it be a Stobar or Katabar configuration? The Navy's submission to the Defence Acquisition Council was for another of the Stobar Vikram class. This approach makes sense if India believes it needs another carrier quickly and at the lowest risk and cost. However, it won't offer anything more than the existing Vikram. If it is a copy of the Vikrant, it should be able to be commissioned within 10 years of being laid down. If the need for a third carrier is not so urgent, and India is prepared to accept greater risk and cost, but delivering greater capability, one option would be to use a Catabar, a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery version of the UK's Queen Elizabeth design. Displacing 65,000 tonnes and carrying around 70 aircraft, this would provide a significant capability improvement. If this option is chosen, it could be commissioned in around 10 years. If the need for a third carrier is not urgent and India is prepared to accept high risk and cost, but delivering the greatest capability, one possibility is to go with a French nuclear powered carrier design. France is increasing its defence and security footprint in the Indian market, including Rafales in the Air Force and likely also with the Navy, together possibly with nuclear powered attack submarines. Mm -hmm. So cooperation on a nuclear powered carrier is possible. While still in the design phase, the future new generation aircraft carrier or PANG is planned to start building in 2031, entering service at the end of 2037 or early 2038. Displacing around 75,000 tonnes, this would provide the most significant capability, but also at the greatest cost and risk. If this option is chosen, it is possible that it could be commissioned in the early 2040s, perhaps replacing the Vikramaditya. But this approach, in isolation, would still result in a two-carrier fleet. But a great carrier design will offer little capability if its air wing is not capable 
and so India is planning to bring into service 26 French Rafale M's. The Rafale, already in service with the Indian Air Force, is a very capable multi-role aircraft, and the introduction of the Catabar carrier would enable the Rafales to be utilised to maximum effect. Whichever option India takes for a third aircraft carrier, it will need more fighter strike aircraft. The final component of the carrier strike group's capability are the supporting vessels that make up the group. India already has the destroyers, frigates and replenishment ships to support a carrier, although it will likely need more to support three carrier strike groups. The only element the Indian Navy lacks in supporting the carrier strike groups are nuclear powered attack submarines. And although a project to produce SSNs was approved in 2015, the design is yet to be finalised. In summary, the Indian Navy's move to a three carrier fleet has long been suggested, and it is not surprising given India's geostrategic position. Three carriers should allow one always available, with a second available at longer readiness times. If India feels it needs a third carrier as soon as possible, then the only option is another of the Vikrant class, which should be in service within 10 years. If India has some time and is prepared for more risk and cost, but also more capability, then perhaps a Catabar version of the Queen Elizabeth class is a good option. If this option is chosen, it would make sense that the subsequent replacement of the Vikramaditya would also be another of this class. The first of these should be available in around 10 years time. If India can wait and is prepared for significantly more risk and cost, but with the greatest level of capability, then perhaps India might try to convince France to share the plans of its forthcoming nuclear-powered Catabar carrier. If this option is chosen, it would likely only be available when the Vikramaditya is decommissioning. This would mean that another Vikrant would still be needed to achieve a three-carrier fleet. Regardless of which option is chosen, the Indian Navy will likely require more destroyers and frigates to support a third carrier strike group and definitely need more carrier fighters. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.